Okay, so this is the beginning of a new chapter that goes uh, in parallel to, to the JavaScript, uh, to the sequence of JavaScript topics, um, where we start uh, to uh, understand uh, the browser environment uh, in which our front end applications are going to run. Uh, some, some things are quite, uh, uh, say, uh, easy to understand, uh, but they tend to be uh, wide because there are really many uh, hundreds of options that uh, we probably should be aware of if we want to create a very uh, complete and nice looking modern, uh, modern um, front end, um, even before we come to JavaScript. So for this week, uh, we will not write a single code of JavaScript. Uh, we are uh, just trying to create or to understand how to create uh, the uh, the content of the web page okay so the layout uh, and the content and the colors and, and stuff like that okay using html and css um, we'll try to uh, touch the main points uh, so that and give you pointers so that you can go, so know where to go for for studying more for understanding more because there are literally hundreds of of, uh, of options uh, and of course, we cannot cover all of them, and not all of them would be interesting or, or necessary in our work and in our projects. Okay, so uh, we may start uh, with a very quick uh, look at the HTML. So I don't, I, I assume that practically uh, all of you already know what HTML is. Uh, at least uh, they try to do something, um, maybe very simple or maybe more complex. Uh, 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 so right now I will just only try to to, to highlight uh, the fundamental points and trying to highlight this kind of uh, modern uh, touch, uh, let's say, to, to HTML. So we won't go into the old style development of web pages. Uh, we'll start directly from uh, the, 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 the HTML5 standard. Uh, the standard Maybe it's a bit different from the older ones, but uh, especially the philosophy of, of approaching the design is uh, is quite different um, from from what we had before. So we won't uh, bother with all the details. And we'll go straight up to how would you approach the design web page today? Okay. Of course, uh, HTML is a language, so it has its own characteristics. Um, but basically what we want to see is how to use uh, the main construct, the main elements of the language. Uh, HTML is a, is a long story, of course. We know that it turned uh, um, from you know, 1921, it turned uh, 30 years old in, uh, in 2000, this year, basically in 2021. Um, and uh, uh, right now we are here with uh, the so-called HTML5 version. Uh, there is a strange number in here of versions, but it's an historical artifact, basically. Uh, this XHTML was a sort of an experiment. It was very nice from the uh, syntax point of view because we all uh, we, there were a lot of validation rules in, in HTML and, uh, that derived from XML, but then it was abandoned for a more practical um, for a more practical approach. So this HTML5 basically uh, is not really a formal standard. It's a group of people that they didn't, they didn't like the direction in which HTML4 uh, and then XTML uh, was going because it became too formal, too verbose, to uh, say, um, too similar to a programming language basically. And uh, they wanted to um, simplify it a lot. And uh, uh, inject into the language some knowledge about how web pages were designed. Uh, so basically, uh, this, this step where we had in the in the, in the, in the beginning of the century, basically, uh, there were languages that were, they were trying to be neutral about the kind of content that you want to develop. With XML, XHTML, uh, they were saying, okay, we are not neutral because we are creating web pages. So what does a real web page today look like? Okay, so let's adapt the language to cover uh, the needs of web page developers, okay? This was an initiative that was basically against the Standardization Institute um, because the people didn't like where the standards were going. Um, and so they created a sort of a fork of a language that, of course, uh, gained a lot of interest and uh, acceptance from the industry, from the developers, for the browser developers also. 
and so it became basically the standard. Uh, the number five, you may be surprised, okay, the HTML version five dates uh, uh, seven years back. So the, isn't there any version 5.1 or 5.2 or six? Uh, the answer is no, uh, because uh, um, this, this name HTML5 is not a single version, but it's a sort of a continuous versioning and continuous updating. Uh, what they call it is the, the living standard, the HTML5 living standard. So every now and then they, they, they update it. Uh, and so there is no fixed point of what HTML5 is. HTML5 is a, five is a, it's a trend, it's a dynamic, uh, let's say, target. So um, basically, uh, while the previous version of HTML were focused on the concept of web pages, right now we're thinking of applications. So the language will support us in, in describing um, the basic structure of an, of an application. And it's not a single standard, but uh, uh, there are many smaller standards. So there will, of course, there's a co of course a, a core specification. So you see here in blue, were the specific the, the original specification for the HTML language, and in green we have the extensions that this uh, working group, uh, this independent working group, uh, started to propose and to implement, um, uh, deriving from uh, basically the, the needs of the users, but also other um, other people propose standards that will. Well, well, I say were included in the language, or magic, basically, it's better to say they were available to be included in the language. Then it will depend on the single browser manufacturer whether to include or not uh, on any of these uh, uh, specific features in the language. And so HTML is not one specific standard; it's a set of standards, and every browser will implement a subset of those. And this subset is sort of changing a long time, of course, while development. So, for example, uh, we have this uh, interesting website. It's called the caniuse.com, uh, where uh, for uh, any functionality uh, that is defined in HTML5. So, for example, this we, we are an example of the page about drag and drop, for example. Okay, uh, LS is the link to the so-called living standard. So. The living standard of HTML5 is living because it's evolving over time. There's no version one or two or three and four. It's uh, it goes on uh, continuously, and it will tell you for all the the browsers. Uh, so, for example, this functionality in Chrome was supported uh, uh, for all versions from five to seventy nine, and currently, currently at the time at the time when I took this picture, uh, is supported by version eighty. So this baseline here are the current versions of the major browsers. So if, if your users have an updated version of the browser, then uh, this feature, drag and drop, is supported by Edge, by Firefox, by Chrome, by Safari, and so on. And it's not supported, I don't know, for, by Firefox for, for Android and whatever. Uh, if they are a browser which is not uh, um, updated, then you can go back in time uh, and see, okay, which were, we want the support for the previous versions if my users are not really updated. So you can evaluate, you can judge um, which users could be, uh, could benefit, could uh, or use browsers that actually where this feature is working, basically. Uh, here it will tell you also um, how many users uh, in worldwide, uh, depending on the usage percentage of the, of the different browsers, uh, how many users worldwide that will be uh, using a browser that uh, uh, where this functionality is implemented. So uh, you have a tool to decide whether the new fancy uh, standard, the new fancy addition to the standard uh, that came out just yesterday will actually be appreciated by your, your users or will create uh, errors in your web pages if, uh, uh, if you are using that. Mm -hmm. But as long as we stay with the major okay, standard, the major features, uh, we should not have uh, uh, many problems, of course. Hmm? Um, but it's living in the sense that every new, uh, every, every new version of a feature or every new feature and every new version of a browser will change the support. So some things start working better, some things uh, uh, continue to work uh, not, so, not so well in the, uh, in the browser. Okay, 
uh, all these features of course are encoded into a language and the language itself is very simple it's just a, as you already know it's just a nested tree of uh, elements mm -hmm. uh, the basic data type in html is the element the element that is marked by a starting and an ending tag with this uh, angular syntax basically and all the elements are nested inside each other uh, like in uh, in xml uh, the page should start with a doc type declaration that is very simple in html5 it's just html in the previous version you get to supply a lot of details um and uh, uh, the basic structure is uh, uh, all the documents should be contained into an html tag then we have a net section and then we have a body section inside the body you can have actually whatever you want so there is uh, or, or every element could be nested there hmm? so the basic structure is a nesting of elements nesting elements and every element can contain other elements or can constrain attributes so attributes are specified for an element inside the starting tag with uh, a syntax of the, of the type name name equal to value and the values are always strings so this map, name value mapping uh, comes up everywhere in uh, web technologies with the basic mechanism for for creating information okay um so we just have to remember uh, these two basics uh, two basic objects that we have in html elements and attributes so the syntax is very simple what makes it complex is that every type of element has different rules different characteristics uh, and different sets of attributes that do different stuff uh, to, to the element itself so in a very simple syntax uh, we have a very wide set of uh, functionalities and capabilities um okay uh for the and we will come to this uh, uh next week uh, uh the html document okay the document is just uh, a text a text file or just a text encoded into a string uh, if you if you read it from the network uh, so it's represented as a as a sequence of, of characters okay a sort of a string uh, but we already know that working and operating on a very long string uh, is not feasible uh, and so uh, both for the browser and for our javascript applications so um what the, what the first action that the browser does on the html is uh, the uh, um, sort of a parsing action where all the document is read all the elements are identified and the next thing the syntactical next thing so the textual nesting of the elements is checked, of course, and will be represented by a tree data structure. So it will um, be represented by nodes that we, we know, uh, we already knew from, from the last lecture that this set of nodes uh, arranged in a tree structure is called the document object model, the DOM, uh, which is created whenever the browser sees the HTML. So we will uh, interchangeably look at the text uh, which is something that we can see more easily and think at the tree or think at the, or look at the tree and think at the text. For, for us, there are two representations of the same thing. Of course, the second one on the right is uh, uh, easier to operate uh, with uh, programs and uh, the one on the left uh, is easier to read by, by humans or by programmers. Um, and we see that in the, in the tree representation, we have every node for for each element uh, of the text for example h1 and so on and uh, this element may contain other elements so for example html contains head head contains title and there's there are also special elements uh, like for example this text marker that says that uh, inside this element uh, there is some free text some text uh, like this one which is outside it's not an element it's contained inside the element but it's not an element itself so it makes up uh, like uh, uh, a contained text element hmm? it's a special type of node 
and uh, it happens that there is also some text where we don't expect it for example after the after h1 and before p so h1 ends here and p starts there so from here to there there is nothing okay it's not really nothing because there's a new line and two spaces so even white space is encoded as text we usually tend not to care about it because html ignores the white space um, outside the text uh, but it's represented in the tree for for maximum fidelity basically. so we see many more nodes than we would expect and also attributes so we have nodes that are children children of other nodes and the text nodes are children of element nodes and also attribute nodes uh, for example, we have uh, this attribute href uh, is not shown in this tree, but uh, every node has a, is, is a separate set of children uh, of the of children attributes, uh, all the attributes that we have. Hmm. So basically, the this a node uh, will be an, a node in the structure when we have the children, a list of children, which is basically the text. Uh, and a list of attributes uh, where we, we basically have the href uh, attributes for this hmm? so in every node we can go down the the, the tree of elements that are nested and at an arbitrary level uh, and uh, we can explore the attributes of that specific node hmm? um, all of these can be represented uh, uh, and uh, explored, of course, in the in the DOM inspector of the browser. But we'll see more about that uh, when we deal with the DOM itself. So, so for for now, we just have the understanding that what we are writing here is not just descriptive, but is ready for being uh, analyzed by the program. Next week, we'll see the details of the, how the DOM is implemented, and so we will learn more about this uh, right side view of the of the HTML um what are what are what's the meaning of the of the various html elements huh? there are dozens of them more than 100 elements uh, different elements um well basically there is uh, some element that creates some specific uh, effect or have some specific meaning on the page we'll see for example the titles we'll see for example the list uh, with the paragraphs and so on um, and some uh, have little or no effect uh, other than giving a meaning or an intended meaning to a section of the document. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will try to use the HTML elements like, uh, you know, maybe many of you know LaTeX, uh, where you give the command for saying this is a new section, but you don't specify actually what the section looks like, what is the font, what is the spacing. This would be a separate uh, uh, role for the for the for the document class like in LaTeX. It's the same here in HTML. We try to use the HTML language just for specify the structure of the document of the page, and then we will use uh, style sheets, uh, which is the next topic today, uh, for uh, giving the layout and the and the graphical appearance. Mm -hmm. So basically, the rule is that we try to use uh, the markup so the HTML tags uh, in a semantic way but specifying what is the role of every element in the page. And later on, the presentation should be done with style sheets and not in HTML. So we try not to use the HTML language to define alignment, to define spacing, to define uh, uh, other details like that. Um, but before we go into detail, I think that the first uh, two rules uh, that uh, you know, style sheets implement uh, are the basic rules of the lay of layout. So uh, in in a page, we have a, a set of elements, okay, that may be laid out uh, one after the other in a vertical way, or elements that are laid out left to right in an horizontal way. Every element in, in, in our page will have one of these two rules for uh, for display, basically. Uh, and we distinguish between these two groups of elements, uh, uh, the vertical ones, the one that uh, uh, lay out vertically one uh, below the other are called block elements. Mm -hmm. 
block elements are a sort of paragraph of, of text paragraphs uh, um, headings uh, and so on everything that takes uh, a whole row of space uh, is a block element so if you have many block elements uh, one after the other they will be displayed one below the other um, and uh, uh, the others are the so-called inline elements inline elements are uh, text are images are buttons and so on that if you have more of them in in the same html file they will be placed from left to right okay and usually in inline elements are inside block elements so you cannot have uh, an inline element just laying around but it should be contained into a block element so there are rules about how to nest elements one with one inside the other so usually you, you create a, a row container a block container inside this block you fill uh, the different elements in a row um, okay with this is a general rule then the single elements starts with a default nature so a given element is by default a block or a given element is by default uh, in line but you we will be able to change this behavior with the style sheets so about these elements uh, what are they and how many they are uh, well this is a picture for from the standard that says that we have many different types of groups of elements um many of them or most of them are so-called uh, flow elements uh, that are those that contain the content of the page that will flow from uh, top uh, uh, top level corner to the bottom uh, of the page um, but inside this general big category of flow elements uh, we have uh, uh, section elements that describe uh, um, the uh, basically the outline of the page you know, like we have titles of level one level two level three which is separate from the heading content this is a confusing uh, say terminology um, sectioning basically is the outline hmm, where we have the heading of level one heading of level two and so on uh, the heading content is uh, um the, the the banners that we have in the, the top of the bottom of, of a section or the titles or, or the different sections and so these are just for structuring the document and for giving a, a wide description of the structure of a page and then we have actually the content of the page the short course phrase in context that contains the text and everything which is inside uh, inside a paragraph okay uh, groups of, of elements, uh, words, uh, icons, buttons, and so on, that compose uh, the individual uh, elements inside uh, an inline row. Hmm? This is the big uh, category that will map uh, to a set of, uh, of elements that we may use. Hmm? So, uh, for example, uh, sectioning is, uh, is able to divide or to mark up some parts of the page as belonging, for example, to the main article or so called the main content that we have in the page to for example navigation part of the page uh, to an aside so like the the left column or the right column where we have some related content but it's not the main content and so on or we may have a header and footer section in our in our page so we can start thinking about the layout of a page okay so if we want to have a page like this uh, we'll have probably something like that okay in, in a quite standard layout uh, this part would be the header that will contain of course a navigation bar here then we have the main article we may have the footer and uh, this could be an, an aside if we have related content or maybe another navigational element if depending on where we have related content or we have uh, um, 
uh, a, a second level menu, for example. And so we can describe how the page looks like by using this high level content. These are just invisible containers. Hmm? Uh, they don't show anything. They just group the other elements. The other elements could be headings for titles, uh, let's say titles, uh, from the largest one to the smaller ones that define the, the structure of the web page. So you, you would put a, 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 a say news uh, text here would be an heading of level one, for example or level two and the title of the web page or oh, oh, okay my site would be probably also an heading level one so that would be probably smaller so we use a level two for the article and level one for the main page heading and so on so we are using special styles for this high for this saying that this is a title and they will be rendered in bold and uh, in the right uh, um, let's say uh, size and uh, and face and uh, uh, okay so these are some uh, suggestions about how to use uh, these different elements and uh, uh, okay see so these are another uh, a picture and say it's better drawn than what i what i did uh, say interactively with you and inside inside uh, every sectioning element we may have actual content we may have block level elements Man, mainly we have paragraphs of text okay or we may have uh, uh, lists lists uh, uh, ol is a uh, ordered list so with numbers one two three or ul is unnumbered list with ballots uh, that are the main element that, that create the paragraph content Okay, there are uh, many others, but uh, um, or we may have uh, inside the, every paragraph uh, inline content. So the actual content of the paragraph uh, that is made of text, basically text. The text can, can also contain images. It can contain some formatting like uh, emphasis or italics, uh, maybe uh, bold, which is called strong or B, may contain links. Uh, which the a tag and so on and many other different tags uh, if you go to the documentation you see the different uh, um, characteristics of, of each of them so basically we have uh, from a big picture we have the body of the document inside the body we have some sectioning instruction to create the general structure of the page inside of each of these sections we usually have uh, some heading to mark up the meaning of the section and after that, we have some block level elements that contain inline elements. Hmm? Um, that's all basically. Hmm? Okay, there are of also, uh, but we will come to this later when we also have the interaction with JavaScript, uh, some tags, some elements uh, that involve user interaction. So they can generate events, uh, they can be dynamically pro programmed, and so on. Hmm? And basically, we have uh, we will use links. We will have uh, buttons. We will have inputs. And inputs basically are the text inputs or the um, check downs, uh, check boxes, or the radio buttons. Uh, select is the name for the drop down menu in uh, in HTML. And uh, okay, text area is a is a wider uh, text input than than the normal input. So these are the elements that we usually know uh, use in forms. So we'll, we'll dedicate some uh, specific time for understanding how forms work uh, in HTML, especially not just for form submission. This is something that probably you already know, but how they, they interact with the DOM and with the JavaScript when the user is, uh, is interacting with them. There are also tables uh, that uh, we can also structure content with a different set of layout rules, uh, which are tabular. Uh, rules. These are only used for, uh, say, representing tables of data and alignments of data and something like that. Um, let's stop here for a moment and try to create uh, some layout of our own just to put this in practice. Okay. 
So I uh, opened, uh, where is that? Hmm? A new project for this week called uh, week three. And uh, we may start to create one first file. Uh, let's call it scores. Hmm? HTML. Hmm. So let's try to understand. You remember the exercise of the scores uh, that we have in the exams uh, that we did last week together. We try to describe that the content of the uh, of the transcript of your scores uh, into an HTML page instead of just printing it on the screen. So how would you would like? Of course, we are today we are not able to generate dynamically that for from a JavaScript or from the database because we still don't have the knowledge about how to operate uh, in JavaScript inside a web page. So we will just create a mockup, uh, an idea of how that would like uh, would look like uh, using uh, the knowledge that we have up to now. So basically, it's an HTML file that is should be should have a, a doc type declaration that it contains um, uh, HTML tag that will contain all the body all the document and the HTML is uh, uh, always exactly two children which are the head sorry head section and the body section the head will contain actually the title of the page for example my scores plus a set of other metadata or meta information about the pages the page for example we'll see later that we use in the head the instruction for loading scripts uh, instruction for loading style sheets and so on and also the instruction for example uh the, the uh, for example we can i i think we can specify that the encoding of the file is in utf8 and some information like that hmm? um so information that helps the browser to uh, to understand uh, uh, the content of the page so you we have this meta tag that contains uh, everything uh, about the page so visual studio code gives us the link to the mdn that will uh, tell us what can go inside the meta what can go inside the head and so on so for example uh, Okay, that's why I was wrong. I wanted to check because the attribute is charged and not encoding. So that's why I wanted to check because I I I I was I wasn't sure to remember correctly. Okay, so every everything is is linked there. And in the body, we have uh, all the real content of the page. So we could create. Uh, um, a structure similar uh, to the picture that we saw in the slides, uh, but that will contain our our scores. So we have um, a header at the, at the beginning, a section uh, heading. heading. Okay, that can contain a title, for example, H1, my scores. And we may, it may also contain a navigation bar, for example. And inside this navigation bar, we don't know what, what we may put, uh, for example, uh, uh, different elements like uh, different links. Uh, for example, a link uh, that points to the home, a second link that points to the, uh, I don't know, the statistics uh, or whatever. Of course, the, this A becomes a link uh, and it needs to have a reference uh, to some page where to link to. Mm -hmm. Usually, if we don't, uh, initially, if we don't have a page to link, we just have a hash sign that says, okay, link to this same page, link to myself, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the, the heading of the page. Mm -hmm. Remember this picture that we made? Uh, we have the header of the page that contains a navigation bar inside the header. Hmm? Header. Sorry. Okay. 
and then we have the main article of the page or the, the rest of the page that is made of a, a main content as a, and an aside so this main or article we could call it in these two ways there are different uh, sectioning elements uh, uh, and then a side uh, that we where we may have uh, other information related information hmm? so we may have uh, an aside and the main content hmm? the main content may be, be may be even composed of many different articles if, we, if this were a blog or something like that and so in the aside we may have uh, uh, h2 or h3 like something about information and uh, this information may be done in sort of uh, of links for example uh, i don't know we have the links about uh, the and so i don't know the exam dates uh, we have links about uh, the schedule we may have links about uh, graduation whatever it may be interesting and in the main content we will have uh, the actual scores so we may have a title uh, your scores and this will be represented probably as a table hmm? let's say for, for example for the moment let's, uh, let's just put some text uh, table with all my scores okay so this is the structure that we want to, to give to our page we want we know what to write more or less uh, we know the content and we know how a page is composed by pulling together different content so if you want to see this page the only thing that we need to do is just to open this file in a browser even locally, we don't even, we don't need yet a, a, a web server for running it. We will need later, but not right now. And so we may just open this file, uh, which is yeah, it's this one, scores one. And it doesn't look probably very nice, or so it doesn't look what, how we expect it. For example, we expected that the aside would be on the left and the main would be in the center or the center right of the page. Uh, we didn't tell it yet, actually, to, to the browser. Uh, we haven't told that. We had, we had just marked up the different section, saying, okay, this, the role of this session is this one, and the role of this section is the other one. How these roles map to the visual aspect of the page is not a problem for HTML. We are going to keep the very same HTML and uh, uh, apply the layout uh, on top of it uh, using the style sheets. Uh, so it's normal that the HTML itself is very crude. It doesn't have any uh, real uh, uh, layout, the real, uh, it doesn't look like the final page, mm -hmm. but it contains the blocks uh, that the may then they may then be formatted according to some specific rules hmm? so we may say for example that the heading and the and the navigation bar have some margin from the rest of the text and the two other sections the information one and the scores one are um, on the two sides of the page for example and they are the information is is narrower and the scores are wider for example in the page but all this information about uh, uh, colors, about fonts, about layout, about sizes is not in the HTML file. We will learn how to separate these two words, uh, the content and the structure of the content. So it's important that we have the right nesting of elements inside each other to give a, a semantic structure of, of the page. And for the moment, we don't care about the appearance. We will learn how to do that uh, with the style sheets. Uh, but at the same time, we already have some, we see the tree here, for example, of the of the page, the, the structure of the page in the inspector of the browser, where we have all this information here. And when I say that this uh, uh, text, like header, aside, and main, and so on, are invisible container containers, this is what I meant. There are just blocks that contain parts of the page 
they are invisible you don't see them and you don't and they don't they don't have any effect on the visual aspect of the page for the moment then we are going to add it right okay um so this is the basic file on which we are going to work i can try to make it better better looking for example uh, well, for example we can um we, if we want to make a list of links in the sidebar, Marco is asking, uh, is there any difference between... Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so, it's a good question. Um, you were saying, I want this exam day to, to be a link, okay? So, I want to be a link to some other page. I don't know, exam dates uh, or whatever. That you are, um, we are uh, wrapping the text uh, that we want to be clickable inside the start and the beginning uh, tag of an A. Mm -hmm. So your question is, uh, is it better like this, or is it better by swapping them? Like that. Mm -hmm. Actually, the second one is wrong. Mm -hmm while the first one is right because the list item is a block level element and a is an inline level element so we first create the item we takes the whole row and inside the item we have uh, the text that also can, can be transformed into a link uh, this would be wrong because we are trying to nest inside an inline element so an element that only takes some part of a paragraph we are trying to nest inside of that an element that would like to have the whole row for itself the whole block so we can nest block elements inside block elements so a block element may contain other block elements that may contain other block elements at the end some block elements will contain inline elements these inline elements may contain other inline elements but cannot contain again block level elements Mm -hmm. so it's a it's a row that contains some text and this text is turned into a link mm -hmm. so this is not uh, um, is not valid it's not valid html um, the problem with browsers is that they are very forgiving mm -hmm. so it will show it again you don't get any exception a browser will never give an exception onto a web page if even if you have something wrong uh, oh, it will try nevertheless to show it in some way hmm? and so in this case we have some very strange behavior where the ballot becomes blue but this is firefox maybe chrome will behave differently uh, when we have an html which is not really valid and for helping us there are some tools uh, for example the validator validator with the thing with the p Okay, this service for the W3C, uh, where we can send a link or upload a file and have the, the validator check our HTML. Okay, so for example, if we did this, we can do a copy and paste of this page into the validator W3C.org, and we may have the checker uh that will tell us okay uh, maybe you should add a language attribute to the html start tag so that to, to declare whether this page is in italian or in english but then we have the error that the element a is not allowed as a child element of ul in this context so actually this is saying that uh, it's the same error but it's uh, seen from a different point of view it's saying that inside ul you may only have block level elements. So A is not a valid child of UL. Hmm? And it, it found this error before that error where LI is not a valid child of A. So there are actually two errors in sequence that makes this invalid. So with the validator, you may have a lot of uh, help in, in checking uh, the correctness. There are also browser extensions where you can add the, the validators inside your browser with a plugin. 
and so you may have uh, one an icon in the corner that will turn uh, a green or red or orange according to uh, whether a page that you are seeing is valid or not so they will help you a lot uh, during development mm -hmm. uh, and we know we must do that explicitly because uh, as we say the, the the browsers are are too forgiving okay they try to show you something even if there's a lot of uh, syntactic or semantic error in the page mm -hmm. So that was a good question just to to pull up this uh, this need for uh, for separate validation of the page. Mm -hmm. um, OK. We may, uh, as we say, we may try to to insert some some scores into a table, for example. OK, so just to see how, how the tables work. So instead of saying, OK, the table with all my score, we put the real the actual table. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a section, a table, a tag, and the table tag is composed of different rows that are marked with the table row and it different cells that are marked with table data, TD, or table headings for the titles at the top or the bottoms uh, um, that are marked with th huh? nested uh, correctly um, and of course uh, uh, this the, the strange thing is that a table is by its nature a flow content so it's an inline element so it would normally be put inside another container inside of, of, of a block level container uh we don't have any con if you don't have any uh semantics for the container in which you want to put some elements you could put a, a simple div element we didn't mention it because we wanted to wait for a, a real example where this is needed uh, div is a block level is a block level element with no predefined semantics so we saw it here i didn't comment it say so, okay we can you can create blocks and this block may be paragraphs of text maybe lists and so on or at the end the last one is the div element this div element has no special meaning it's only used to, to create a block so an horizontal content without any special meaning that cannot be say mapped to any of these predefined meanings it doesn't have any predefined semantics but it's a block so it's used a lot just to section the page to create section or portion of the pages to, and to deal with this session in a different way not in a special way we mark up this this part and later on we will discuss how to uh, how to style it how to but if we include the table into a div we are sure that uh, nothing happens to my table that the table will be along in a row because otherwise what may happen is that we have uh, for example a text abc and then the table and the continuation of the text def because the table will be treated like a very large character of text which is strange but the table element is an inline element we want if you want to have a row for itself with the table for with all the space in the line you must include it directly into a block level element and so this is what we are doing with this uh, um, div inclusion here. So let's format it again. Alt Shift F, just to see the next thing. So the table has usually heading and the body, and the heading and the body contain will contain rows. So the heading contains a row only one row and this row contains the headings about uh, uh, th are the headings uh, for example the name of the course the second heading is uh, this the score and the third one is the uh, date and in the body we, we may have many rows in the table body we may have many rows so the the table heading is inside the row which is inside the head of the pay of the table and the body of the table will contain rows that 
many rows that may have inside many elements that usually are table data. So the course is web applications one, and then the second column will be well, the second cell is uh, 30, of course, and then TD is uh, today, which is whatever is 18, 03, 2021. And then we may have a second row, third row with the same structure. Of course, the, the courses will be different, but just for for speed, no? I'm making them equal. So it's a, it's a very nested structure, uh, but if we go save this file and go to the browser and reload it, we see that actually we have this table. It isn't very good looking, we know, but we will learn how to make it good looking. But it's, uh, it has uh, all this uh, sort of alignment uh, of the elements. It's quite strange because the headings are centered and the data is left aligned. So they look like they're, they're not really well aligned, but they are, believe me, they are. You see that this course is this cell and all these cells below, the scores, the dates, and this is the table element by itself. Mm -hmm. This table element here, and the div that contains it gives a, a whole row to the element that contains only a table. It could contain something else, but the table may expand because all, uh, there cannot be anything else into this, this div because table is the only child of the div itself. Mm -hmm. So we can see and explore the nesting uh, in the inspector of the browser. So we are we we uploaded further content in the page. Okay, uh, speaking of content, uh, right now we have a lot of elements uh, that uh, uh, look similar, uh, and uh, some are a bit anonymous. Uh, imagine that you have more than one table in your document. So one table will be probably for the scores, and another table. I don't know for other kind of information like the schedule or uh, or anything else. You may have uh, we have a list here with links, uh, but we may have other lists uh, in the same page. So we uh, even if there are there's there are many types, many instances, many copies of a UL, we may want to give a special name to each of them because we want maybe this one to be red and the other list to be green. I don't know. So uh, we must have a way of giving some extra attributes to the elements, to the HTML elements, to make them recognizable later. Recognizable to the style sheets that will apply them some style to that specific element, or recognizable to the JavaScript that will need to go and maybe add or modify uh, the scores in our table. And for this, uh, we have two further attributes that are can be applied applied to any HTML element, they are always valid, and they don't do, they don't do nothing, okay, <laughs> again, like the div element, uh, they, have, they, have no, they have no immediate effect. They just mark an element with a set of classes, one or more classes. Classes are just names, A, a is a class, B, B, C, C, is an identifier, you can define your own class name as you want or an id uh, which gives a, a given element a unique id that you can re, that you can use to refer to that element later on so actually if you want to mark and give a name to a specific element you just give it an id attribute to that element and later on in the javascript or in the style sheet if you want to refer to that element you can just pick it up by id you can search for it by giving the id and only that element will, will be selected. The rule is the IDs should be unique inside the page. Of course, if, if you put more than one, uh, it's not valid, but the browser will not tell you, but we should be careful about the uniqueness of the IDs. Uh, classes are a many-to-many -many relationship with the elements. So why, why the ID is a one to zero to one uh, relationship that every HTML element may have an ID or not, it may only have one ID, and this ID may only be applied to one element. Okay. Classes are a many-to-many -many relationships, cheap, uh, meaning that every element may have one class, 
or more than one class. You just separate them by sp with spaces hmm? if you want more than one, one class. And a given class may be applied to many different elements. So we have maybe a class that we call it important. And everything, uh, every time I have an element that I want it to be important, I add a class equal to important to that element. And maybe later on, the, the style sheets will make this important element turn red or bold or whatever effect you want to have. So you're just putting placeholders that assign a, a label hmm, to every element. If this label is generic, then use a class. This class can be applied to all the elements uh, where it's relevant. Um, and every element may have, even if, if you needed more classes. If you want to be specific about one element, you just use the AT. Uh, we can use a, a class and ID together in the same element. Yes, yes, of course we can. Hmm? They are just separate attributes and there are different separate ways of doing the same thing. Hmm? So for example, in our case, we have the, the div that was quite an anonymous element that contains the table. Uh, we may give an ID, say, okay, well, this is not any div in the page. It's the div that can contain uh, the, uh, the, the scores, scores table, for example. Mm -hmm. So I want to remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, list, uh, with the, all the links uh, in the about the information, we may call it, uh, give it an ID of uh, info links, for example, or even a class of type info, if we want, that may be used for uh, other stuff also. Hmm? And also uh, might be navigation because uh, it, give, it give navigates to every, uh, other pages and the navigation may also be the class to, to the navigation bar. So that when we decide that we want to apply some style to all the navigation elements, we can just search for all the elements that where we assign a class called navigation. Um, these names don't have any predefined semantics. In fact, if I go to the browser and run and I reload this page, nothing changes at all. Really nothing. Okay. They don't change the default interpretation of the element. They only give us some pointers, some hooks for the JavaScript and for the style sheet to identify some parts of the page. Uh, about the quotes, uh, uh, you can use uh, interchangeably the single quotes or the double quotes. Uh, HTML doesn't care. Uh, so there's no, you can, the, both of them work uh, exactly in the same way. Hmm? Um, probably, well, for the static point of view, I tend to use the single quotes because they're easier on the eye, but uh, it's just the same. We will use this feature when we it will insert JavaScript inside the, inside HTML so that we can use the, the fact that both JavaScript and HTML accept both kind of, kind of quotes uh, in order to nest uh, strings of one langu language inside the strings of the other language. But for the moment, it's just uh, your preference. Uh, Marta, is it a good practice to give each element an ID or to make the HTML file more readable or we have to use it just if we want to assign a set of attributes? Uh, again, it's, uh, it's a trade-off, it's a compromise. If you, if, you, if you put an ID to every element, uh, maybe it's too much because there are elements that you don't care too much about. Uh, for example, the title of the page here. Well, uh, do, do you really have to write uh, that this is a title? Uh, probably the title is the h1 inside the header so if i give a style to the header we'll also cover this one uh, the idea is that uh, uh, you know, first of all it's all incremental so i cannot get it right the first time i will start creating the page i will start marking up the element that i think i will need later i will need to refer to later when i will be creating the application so I, I give names, I give uh, identifiers to them for the styling and for the interaction. Uh, and then when I will 
be right in the code of the file sheets and of the JavaScript, uh, probably I will need to, to come back to the HTML and change and add some extra information. And also maybe sometimes restructure a bit the content uh, because I maybe I, I need an extra container, an extra div uh, or something like that. So usually we try to mark the, the most important parts, uh, but we should already have in mind uh, why we need them. So it's all, uh, yes, uh, incremental and interactive. Uh, Lorenzo, is main uh, is the same as article? Um, I would say yes and no. <laughs> Depends on how you read it. Uh, so all of these, all of these are the same. They are just suggestions, even main, sorry, is missing from this table. They are just suggestions on how to use them. So how you want to use them. They're just semantic markup that will try to tell the developer of the page or to yourself even as, the, as a documentation, what role do you want for that page? If you add, for example, a blog like, uh, you would have probably one main with many articles inside. If you only have one content uh, that it could be main or it could be article, more or less the same. Hmm? Uh, no, sorry, just, uh, I don't know why it's missing, but it should be here. In the specification so probably uh, well, it, maybe it was me it was after that uh, later i don't know what the wire is missing but actually all of these all of these are just uh, different names uh, for divs their behavior is the same as a div. They are a special name to help us structure the page, huh? nothing more. We try to use them consistently, but there is no actually rule or error that you can get. Hmm? Um, okay. There is also a, a third attribute that we'll try to use as few as possible, as, few, as, uh, as little as possible. Um, that also can be applied to every HTML element. So every HTML element has their own attribute. For example, the href can only be applied to the to the A, to the link element. No? Um, but class and ID can be applied everywhere. Also style can be applied to every element that applies some specific CSS styling rule to that specific element. So if you want to change some element the, the style of some element uh, specifically hmm? you can do that I, I will just show an example just to tell you that we we tried not to use that uh, for example if i want to write this information in red hmm? for example to make it visible so i can add a style uh, with the information about uh, the color to be red We'll be in a, we'll see in a, in a moment the syntax about this, uh, about the style sheets. So I'm injecting some style information inside an element, and what happens is that uh, where's the browser? Yeah, the browser, yeah. Of course, that this title will turn red. Hmm? It's nothing strange. But it's the same as you are trying to format your titles in, in Microsoft Word by hand, no? giving every title the same style, you change the color one by one. And uh, if you want to change your mind and make it blue instead of red, you, you need to go back one by one and change it. It's better to have a style and then define to define a style and then define what this style would look like. Okay, so this uh, style uh, attribute is a sort of a local formatting uh, that we want to try to avoid as much as possible. Uh, it's better to say, okay, this was the, where is that? Um, some information is inside the aside, so we'll try to give a, a color to the whole aside mm, by applying a style. Or, or if you really want to change the color of this, uh, we may have a class uh, like uh, this is important, for example. And then having a class like important doesn't change the appearance for now. It doesn't hard code a style, but it gives you a class that you can use later 
to apply the style not only to this element but to all the elements that you consider important so always try to separate the formatting from the content uh for the style we should use class attributes instead of id whenever possible mm, well depends id is very specific okay id means this and only this element i want to to to, to consider it for example when you have a form for inserting the data this probably you only have one in the page and so you give a name to it a class is uh, by definition something that may be applied to many elements in the page so it's a more generic uh, uh, tag uh, that may imply different, uh, maybe a common formatting, for example, to different elements. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, right now we are just marking up stuff, and when we start using these tags and, and these classes, probably we'll understand more uh, how, how to use them. Mm -hmm. This is just the basic mechanism. It's the basic mechanism for putting all the formatting and all the interaction so the css and the javascript outside the html this wasn't the case in the first in the earlier versions of, of html of course but um, as we go forward we try to have a very clean html page and then do all the dirty work with style sheets and so on um, okay about uh, the so-called uh, empty or uh, semantic less uh, elements or wildcard elements uh, we already saw the div that creates a block with no specific meaning we also have the corresponding element uh, at the inline level so div creates an empty block uh, with no meaning that we can of course uh, in 99 percent of the cases where we have div uh, we will have a class uh, or an id because otherwise that div does does really nothing okay has no action at all no effect at all but we want to have a class so that we can customize what happens inside that division uh, and the same is the for span span will group a set of elements in the page uh, if we are if you already know that that word will will be bold you can use a strong tag but if a section of the of the line has some maybe you want to highlight it in some special way you define a span with a given class uh, so, for example, uh, I want to highlight uh, the table with all my scores, uh, so I can highlight and class uh, highlight highlight. So I will put probably a yellow background to this text, uh, maybe my scores. So right now, again, the span does nothing except separating or marking this portion of the text. So span works inside an inline context, inside a paragraph. Div works outside blocks, okay? Creates one or more blocks that contain other blocks. And so this uh, marks these words that can be later uh, modified in some way. Um, Okay, Anna, is there a hierarchy for style attribute in CSS? Of course, the reason is very complex. Hmm? So we we'll come to that uh, right now, basically. So uh, the idea is that we could write uh, our web page, uh, we, we structure the section of the web page uh, either with uh, a sort of divs and spans uh, or with uh, the semantic elements. It's from the point of view, the browser is the same. It's only a matter of clarity of, of, of coding of declaration. So maybe it's easier for, even for us and more explicit to say that this is a section instead of a div with class section. The difference is that this name where we are section is defined in the standard. And this is just uh, some identifier that you made up. So there is no maybe some other developer will call this uh, uh, portion or or whatever and uh, you don't have an immediate understanding what is or, or what is happening so basically there is not the, in html5 they try to uh, add these new types of element that doesn't don't add anything really to the language itself uh, or to the capability but uh, uh or the because the default rendering of all of these is the same as this as, as div uh, but we can separate them easily with with style sheets um okay this uh, if if you wonder 
uh, what kind of separation you should use. Uh, there is a, this sort of a flow chart that will tell you uh, if, it, if it's better to use an article or an aside or a figure. Mm, it's all just for, for more clarity. It doesn't really change uh, the, behavior, the behavior of the page. And here is, you have this link that uh, uh, here, the button that tries to summarize some good ideas uh, about how, how to structure the page. Mm -hmm. uh, so how to use the tags uh, in an appropriate way, the semantic classes, uh, the IDs, class, and so on. Um, the, having a clear hierarchy, all these sort of suggestions. So HTML basically is a, is a simple language. Uh, the way we use it, uh, of course, uh, try we, we try it, it will be complex later long you know, enough. Uh, so we'll try to keep the, the, the HTML as clean as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we already mentioned the validator, which is also our friend. So right now we created very ugly pages uh, with some content. So we had a, uh, um, uh, let's say a, a focus on the content and uh, um, and we marked up some structure that we hope to exploit later, basically. And later is now. <laughs> and uh, because we want uh, at this point to be able to give some appearance to this page. And so we have been talking a lot about these uh, style sheets. Uh, so we start to, to see uh, how they look like and how we can apply them to our pages. OK. Um, it's, it's, uh, maybe there's a lot of content. And style, CSS is much more complex uh, than HTML, really. There are many more options, many more corner cases uh, and quirks uh, and strange behaviors. Uh, uh, we'll try to to focus um, very quite quite quickly or quite strictly on the our really target point is this one at the bottom. Uh, we are be using this course the some uh, uh, CSS library which is called the Bootstrap that simply simplifies a lot of stuff for us because um, writing CSS by hand uh, is easy, but getting all the details right is very very expensive in terms of time and of knowledge because you need to know all the quirks of the different browsers. Uh, so our goal will be basically to learn how CSX works, uh, basically to be able to understand what the library is doing. Okay. Um, this CSS is called uh, cascading style sheets. Mm -hmm. Style sheets is quite obvious because we are separate files where we declare all the styles to be applied to one page or to a set of pages. They are cascading because, uh, like Anna was saying in the chat, uh, the same rules uh, may be rewritten more than once because you maybe you declare something for the whole page and then for one section and then for one paragraph you are changing first the font, then the color, then the background and so on. And uh, uh, every rule would apply on top of the previous ones like there were many layers of, of, um, of, of changing the attributes. Okay. So the complexity often very comes from this sort of cascading of, of different layers. And uh, again, like uh, HTML5, also CSS is a sort of in, it's in a sort of a living standard state, um, state where um, new techniques are being added uh, every time, every year, and the browsers will support them more or less. Okay, so this. The study still continues. Um, the syntax is the same. It's a very simple syntax. What changes are the type of identifier, the type of properties, as we will see. And the behavior of this property is very complex. So it's hiding uh, very high complexity behind a very simple syntax. The syntax, in fact, is just based on one construct. CSS is a language with one type of instruction, Okay, the rule. rule. CSS is a contains a set of rules, nothing more. Every rule is made with the same simple structure. A rule is made of a, a selector and some declarations. The selector, like the name says, selects zero or more or one or more elements into the web page. So it says, okay, these rules applies to this set of elements. This is what the selector does. 
for example, a selector called H1 will select uh, all the elements of type H1 inside your page, all the titles, basically, okay. the main title of the, of the page. Selecting doesn't do anything except acting as a target for applying the declarations. So I select some elements, and to those elements, I am applying a set of declarations. And declarations, one or more, are just grouped in, in braces. And each declaration, again, is very, very simple. It gives a, a, a value to a property of the element. So imagine H1 is an object, OK, in the DOM as we'll see, is an object with many, many properties, hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to see them, but our H1 here, OK, uh, where is that? Uh, sorry, I don't. OK. If I select an element, I can see all the sorry all the properties okay which one was that sorry I, I always get lost here uh, inspector h1 styles uh, oh I can see her we have a long list of properties that are applied uh, because it was it was hiding the, the default ones that are applied to that specific element and each of these property has a different meaning to the browser and we can change each of them okay um so we we can apply a different value to any of the properties of all the elements that are matched by the selector so a single selector may match one or two or 20 different elements in the page. There are different types of selectors that will uh, have different algorithms, actually, for selecting, like uh, Alfredo is saying, for selecting elements with a given class or with a given. Uh, so this, but this is the, just the basic syntax. We have a, a, a sub syntax for selectors, some rules, sort of regular expressions for defining selectors. And then the declaration are just like that, name of the property and the value of the property. The complexity is understanding what all these properties do to different elements and how they combine together when they cascade, when they overlap. Hmm? But the syntax is very simple. Uh, for example, I have, may have uh, one in general, a real syntax like uh, header, comma, p.intro means, uh, we'll see the general rule, means uh, uh, I am selecting all the elements called header plus all the elements of type p if they have class equal to intro and all of these with the comma is a union all of the headers and all the paragraphs of type intro will be the target for this set of rules where the background color will be set to red and the border radius will be set to three pixels i don't know what the border radius is for the header but it depends on what the header has inside because these rules are applied to a, an element, but will also be uh, have effect. Many of them will also have effect on to the children. So it's not only the red will not only be the background of the paragraph, but also every content that is inside the paragraph. So we have the cascading on different levels, also cascading through the tree of the of the CSS of the HTML nodes. So if I'm applying some some style here all the children of this element uh, will have uh, that style applied. At least some of the styles are inherited. Some other styles are not inherited. And you see that in the documentation. So some of them uh, may also apply to all the children, unless there is a more specific style on a child, on a, on a child that will overwrite the general style that was inherited from, below, from above. So that's where things start to get tricky. Uh, so basically, we can set an, an attribute, uh, a, uh, a rule that applies to the whole body. So I want all the text to be blue. Okay, uh, let's put uh, um, a style 
with a, a selector that will select the body. So we'll apply to everything, except maybe some title where I want the text to be red or a different color. And so I will reapply a style to the H1 that will override the more general one. So the rule is that the more specific will override the more general rules. It's much more complex than this, but uh, to simplify it, uh, it works in, uh, in, uh, in the way that we are expecting. Mm -hmm. So a rule for a subset of the page uh, will override the rule for a more wider container that will, but that in the absence of other local rules will be inherited from the container. If the rule can be, if the property can be inherited. So there's a lot of, the model is simple, but there are a lot of small details that come into play that make it complex. Say, you, I, I thought I had applied this rule, why it doesn't show? Hmm? Um, okay, so the, well, the syntax, by the way, is very simple because we have a just a um, declaration. Um, sorry, the declaration is the application of the rule here. It's just a semi. Um, a, Colon and the semicolon. The colon will separate the property from the value, and the semicolon will separate uh, uh, the different properties that we have into the single block. The braces are needed even if you have only one property. Hmm? Properties, we have a lot of them, too many, hmm? more than I counted, more than 200, and I got tired of counting because there are more than them. And uh, uh, each of them has special rules, basically. For each property, you may have a set of values that are allowed. Of course, uh, maybe some properties are measures, white, height, spacing, border, margin, and they can measure the, as numbers or as pixels, uh, as uh, lines, line length, and so on. Um, some other are colors, so there are special values for colors. Uh, and, and so on. Some are just uh, enumerated values. So the alignment may be left, center, or right. So the property of time alignment will have a value of type string, but this string may only assume some specific value. And each of them is a different story, basically. Well, not really, but uh, nearly. Hmm? Um, so we must know a given element, I don't know, border right, for example, is a property, just to pick it once, uh, one at random, is a property, the one that I know, uh, because many, may, I don't know, uh, is uh, for uh, a, a block when I want to specify the property of the right border of a block. And you can specify the color, the style, and the thickness, and the width. Or you can specify just the width for the right width. It's a different property that, of course, will override anything that you specified with the more general property border right to an element, and so on. So each of them has their own rule. Um, and uh, uh, okay, we, we must basically know the elements. Uh, and I, I, I linked here some uh, uh, reference pages that are where we should go. Okay, for uh, for searching the different. Uh, this is just for the syntax, but uh, um, CSS reference here. Yeah, yes, alphabetical index. All the yeah, we have all the properties. So, for example, if you want to set the background color for a page, okay, we have the background color property. It's a background or a background color. If you set background color, you can have uh, you said all the values that are named colors, RGB colors, uh, HSS colors, and so on. We have examples. Uh, so we have uh, uh, some example uh, at the top, uh, and then some specification. So the values describe what are the type of values that you can put there. What is the default value? And which elements it can be applied to? So a color can be applied to every element. Maybe the width cannot be applied to some elements, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, it may be, a, it's not inherited. So if I'm setting a, a color on an element, it will not be, the background will not be inherited by the element that will contain it. Uh, okay, well, we have all the all the syntax here. If we get, uh, well, before I was picking the border right, border right hmm, contains a set of properties. So the property name may have a set of values. And this value, let's say it's a shorthand because you can set the different property with one only declaration. 
so the style, solid or dashed, the um, color, uh, the, the thickness, rem is a strange uh, unit of measure, uh, m is the, the white of letter m, in, in, so it's proportional to the, to the text. Uh, uh so basically the the white of this border is the same as the letter m we, we don't have any m here but nearly like a w okay like, like like that and so on okay uh and it will declare you what are what are the the values possible so every every property has this very specific uh, de definition what are the possible values what are the defaults what are the elements where you can apply it and whether it can be inherited or not? Well, these are the four main uh, information that you need about each element. What it does, of course, what, what values can be inherited, what element may has the, have, the pro, have the pro, this property, no? they are affected by this property or not, and, uh, and what's the default. If I don't specify anything, what is the default? Okay. Um, Okay, so there's a lot of information here uh, that we will try to digest uh, bit by bit. Uh, some of it can be understood easily just by thinking about the HTML and also for, for uh, replying to Oxane. Uh, some of it will be, we will be able to understand it better when we understand better the, the nodes of the DOM, basically, how, how they are structured. But basically, just think that every HTML element has a long list of properties, and they can rewrite the values of these properties with my rules. Is these 200 and more uh, properties uh, fall into different categories, of course, uh, so background, borders, colors, and so on. Um, just, uh, just a big warning. Uh, what is the difference between font and text? Because I'm, I always get confused about those. Font uh, text is a uh, paragraphs, and font is letters. What uh, you have characters in a word processor, you would call them formatting the paragraph or formatting the uh, the, par the characters. Okay, so text properties will be alignment, will be uh, line spacing, and so on. Font properties will be uh, the font style, the, um, the font size, the font color, and so on. So I, I always happen to, to look uh, into the wrong category when I want to do something uh, text related, but because text is the paragraph, font is the single character. It's individual, the properties of individual, of individual characters. Uh, okay, uh, what time it is? 10 or 5? Mm, okay. Okay, let, let's go do this couple of slides very quickly because uh, the values are um, represented as numbers, but many of these numbers represent measures on the page. Okay, uh, and so these numbers have special units of measure, and there are many units uh, defined in CSS, maybe pixels, uh, or maybe, like we said, uh, amps, or, or ramps that stand for relative amps different units of measure that, that help us to give a, a size of an element in a context where we really don't know whether our user is seeing the page on a big screen or a, on a small screen and so on. So you, you will not find millimeters, for example, or real measures, only measures that are relative to the pixel size or to the font size, basically, hmm? or percentage relative measures like uh, maybe 10% of the page. I want this column to be 10% of the whole page. So compute the, the actual size according to these uh, uh, sort of relative measures. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, the numbers are very uh, complex. These are the most important measures uh, that we use, uh, the M, the relative M, uh, the percentage, and uh, some measures that relate sort of uh, say they divide the whole page into a hundred by hundred pixel grid, uh, square grid. So you can have how many? One hundred percent, two, three, four percent of the page, not just the containing element, but the specific page. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's better, say, to 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 
to see this with with examples uh, because each one of them has different applications um Okay, about the, the cascading rules that Gabin is asking, uh, I, I ask you to wait uh, until uh, even maybe 10, 10 more slides uh, where I have a, a diagram that will tell us uh, uh, all, the different, uh, all the different rules that are applied to decide who wins. Hmm? Uh, again, as a programmer, I would say try to design things so that you, you don't need to understand all the details of all the internal algorithms. Uh, they, will, they, will, they will be there, but we'll try to make it as clean as possible so they're not to rely on some very strange corner case. Hmm? Uh, but we have a couple of slides on that. Okay, so I, I would propose to make a, a break right now uh, so that we can see more in detail after that some syntax about the selectors, uh, which, the, which is quite easy, and start applying these rules to, the, to our page to make it more Good looking at the end uh, at the end of the hour. Okay, so uh, if you agree, I would break until uh, ten twenty five.